Welcome to today's episode of the Support Insights podcast. Today's guest is David Apple from Zingtree, and I am super excited to be talking to him today. Customer support, success and experience, everything evangelist. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your background, David? Sure. Thanks for having me, first of all. Excited to be here. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Zingtree at the moment. As a Chief Revenue Officer, I'm responsible for marketing, sales, and everything post-sales. So customer success, customer support, and general ops. Prior to Zingtree, I had the fortunate experience of being part of two other hypergo startups, Typeform and Notion. In both of those, like at Zingtree, I joined amongst the first 20 employees and similar roles built out the sales and customer success organizations. At Typeform, it grew into a team of 40 people, which was customer success, customer support, education, sales, operations. And kind of one-to-many scale CSM is what is commonly referred to these days. So learned a lot, made a ton of mistakes. A lot of my customers were also in kind of support or customer success at both Typeform and Notion. And now at Zingtree, Zingtree is a tool that's used by customer support teams, specifically contact center agents, to elevate their performance. And we offer this conversational workflow software that guides them to the next best step, the next best action. So I've learned a lot from our customers about how they organize their support teams and how they set their agents up for success. So excited to chat about that today. Yes, and I understand you started out your career doing things like customer support. So you've got a little bit of on the ground knowledge as well. Uh, My first job, I worked in a call center at my university where I was tasked with raising money from our alumni. I wouldn't say I was our best agent, <laughs> but uh, it, w- it was a fun experience. And, you know, I, I did that. I did cold calling sales. I've kind of started from the bottom. And yeah. And I think you also had some of that experience, right? Yes. My background in customer service before I transitioned over into marketing. It's such a different environment to work in compared to so many other places because you develop this camaraderie with your colleagues where if you're having a bad day and there's something going on in the business, which has annoyed the customers, you're all getting bad calls or if there's something really really good going on that you're promoting you're all in that together as well so it's it's a whole different world I think and so valuable to have as part of your background yeah I I think when when you start from that background like you and I have it's kind of an obvious no-brainer that businesses should invest in support and that support is not just a cost center it's real value It, it actually is what ends up determining if a customer will be a repeat customer or will spread a positive word of mouth or if they're frustrated with a negative word of mouth. So when you're there in the front lines, you see how important it is for like a CFO, not our CFO, but a, another CFO. They may look at it and say, well, this is a cost center. It's just like a, something that we need to do, but let's minimize the cost of it. So I, I think it gives us a, a better perspective on the value of it. Oh, definitely. I definitely champion Center Sum for that very reason. If we go to an event or I speak to someone who works within customer support or customer experience, I'm Mm -hmm. very much like, oh my God, like you must learn so much. And what have you done with that in in your business? And I was just talking to Snug earlier on, actually, about all the Mm -hmm. stuff they've done with their customer feedback. And it's just so nice to see people Uh using the customer voice more. That's great. So back when you were an agent, what did the training look like when you were onboarded or when you staff were taken into the call center? I tried to rack my brain around like, what was that like 22 years ago or so when I, when I did that? And as far as I recall, they basically handed us a few sheets of paper. Mm-hmm. This is your script. Here's like how you handle certain objections. When they say no, when you finish the first part of the script, like go on to this part or that part. And it was basically try to memorize the script or like just read off the script because there was no video. It was just voice. So that that was effectively the training. And I specifically remember because it's, you know, it's uh, embarrassing, like totally fumbling the first. I'd like to say just the first few days, but it was probably longer than that. And I I remember being on the calls and saying, like, I'm so sorry, this is my first day. And people would be so nice because it's alumni to the university, too. It's not like someone calling in that their dryer is not working and they're (laughs) frustrated. So they would be like, oh, no worries, like, take your time. But yeah, it was uh, it was tough and it was yeah, it was not optimal for sure. What was your experience like? 
Well, mine was, I think I had two weeks of just learning about the business and about the systems because they used so many different systems that didn't interact with one another. So there was loads of shadowing and learning all of this stuff before going on the phones because we didn't have a script, but we had certain points that we had to hit on each call. So we had to Mm -hmm. ask them these five questions or something on the call. And so it, it meant that you kind of felt like you could ease into it in a way but then you're trying to make everything stick in your head. And as soon as you go on that first call, it all goes. And it is really nerve wracking. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, you know, I really empathize with agents who are on a call, you know, even if it's a year into their job and they get a question that they have no idea how to answer. And, you know, what, for me, it was a, a safer environment with alumni in my school, but I think it's, it's, it's tough. And, and honestly, from what I see, you know, we, we have 700 customers, I, you know, I've seen a lot and certainly some contact centers are very sophisticated and do things a lot better than what, you know, I described for myself and you, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot that are still kind of figuring it out or haven't really invested in, in doing it in a particularly sophisticated way. Yeah. A lot are stuck in the way that it was when they first did it. So they'll just yeah. think, okay, well, that's that's the rule of thumb. So I'll just do that for my center as well. Exactly. So based on your experience and the knowledge that you've built up, what do you think optimal training would look like then nowadays? Yeah, great question. So it's, it's actually something that I've been doing a lot of thinking about at Zingtree because mm-hmm. we, we have a case study out. One of our customers, Fleet Corps, reduced their training from three weeks to three days using our tool. And it, it got me thinking, was this, you know, our main value prop or is it just one of our value props Mm -hmm. and, and what are the real benefits of that? And for me, I just thought, well, challenges for contact centers, agents typically don't stick around for a super long time. It's not their dream job. It's like a stepping stone or it's just something to pay the bills while they're studying or, or, you know, pursuing another career or something like that. Obviously that's not everybody, but that's, that's common. So what's the right amount to invest in training? How do you set support agents up for success and how do you make them feel like they can, they can do a good job? You know, some of our customers have tens of thousands of SKUs for their products that are different for each region or whatever, each model that comes out is slightly different. You can't expect them to be experts in all of that. So what's the right way to train people so that they're empowered to support their customers in the best way possible? And it's not a very long training that's a big upfront investment for someone who's not really invested in being in the company in that role for a long time. I think the objective for training is what's the shortest amount of time that you can get somebody ramped up Mm -hmm. and feel like they're well-equipped to support customers. And and also what I found really fascinating was the knock-on benefits of reducing training time is not just the saving the cost of training, but also all the other benefits. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of people do focus on that point alone when it comes to a customer support or customer service team is reducing mm-hmm. cost in any way that they can. So yes, reducing training might be a good way to save a bit of money, but it's about so much more than that. Exactly. Every company I have onboarded for, regardless of the role, I'm including Zingtree and Notion and Typeform and, and others, The first few weeks you're drinking from fire hose, like everything is new. The systems are new, as you described for for your support job, the content is new, the products are new, the people are new. And so it's totally unrealistic to expect people to remember even 70% of what, what you told them. Hopefully what they retain is where to go find what information, right? And, you know, a lot of companies have an internal knowledge base that agents can go and find the best practices or the solutions. But, you know, we've all been on hold on those calls where someone says, oh, will you hold for a minute? And then they're like fumbling through different knowledge base articles to find the right one. In the past, they could just tap the person next to them and say, hey, has anybody ever asked you this before? Kind of like that advertisement on TV. It's in in the US at least. Oh, I won't know it. Not relevant for the UK. But yeah, this guy's like, is it normal that they ask what you wear? So uh, yeah, so the, the point is that that used to be one of the solutions, but now that most people are remote, that's no longer an option. So how do you set agents up for success in a world where they're really kind of abandoned on their own mm-hmm. with their computer and the customer? Yeah, I've never heard the phrase drinking from a fire hose before. 
I think that's the perfect way of summing it up when you're trying to learn so much in one go. So at places that you've been more recently then, like Singtree, what have you found has been a really good way of training your new customer support agents? So in America, there's an expression, which is eat your own dog food. We like to think of it as trimping our own <laughs> champagne. <laughs> when, you your own food, <laughs> so when you use your own tool. Eat your own dog food. So when you use your own tool, it's called dog fooding. Like we use our right. own tool, we're eating our own dog food. You're but teaching like me say, so much already, David. <laughs> it, at Zingtree, I learned a new expression, which is we drink our own champagne. So okay. we, we use our own tool. And I think what's, what's great with that is the way we learn our product is through a Zingtree decision tree. Instead of having like long articles, it's bite-sized content where you consume that piece of content, you go on to the next step, et cetera. And what's most powerful about Zingtree as the tool that you that you use for your contact center agents mm -hmm. is that because you have all this bite-sized content that you can use, you know, advanced logic to put the person to the right place at the right time, agents don't need to learn every detail about every product. They just need to look at the screen be able to read the prompt and follow the guide that's on the screen. So, you know, I have a problem with my, with my dryer, you know, what's the problem? Will it not turn on? Is it not drying your clothes or blah, blah, blah. And then based on the problem, it gives you to the next question instead of the agent having to go to find an article, ask the right question, go to find another article, ask another question. So basically by, by doing that, the agents no longer need to learn as much information up front. So that's how Fleet Core and many of our other customers have reduced their training from three weeks down to three days, as I mentioned. Three days. Wow. That's impressive. I mean, I know that onboarding can be drastically reduced, but that was an exciting story for us to hear and share of the impact of our, of our product. Yeah. But what, what I thought was most interesting from a customer support leadership perspective was our customer not only was talking about, yeah, we saved costs on how much it costs to train agents, but all of the other benefits. So prior to Zingtree, when training was three weeks long, they had a whole training team. They had to hire contact center agents in batches so that they would go through that training together. So they would recruit for, say, a month. Everybody would have the same start date, and then they train them for three weeks, and then they'd be ramped up and be able to start. Now that the training is only three days, they don't need to hire in batches because it's not a big effort to train people. So they can hire people more uh, according to the demand of, of their yeah. call center. So that's, that's one big benefit. I think then you give yourself the luxury of being able to be more selective on who you hire as well. If you've got to hire 10 people in the space of like a month or two months, then you are going to be taking as many people as you can if you've not got that many applications. But if you can do it selectively, you can make sure you're bringing on people who have the right background, who are passionate about the product that you sell, or who have a really great personality to fit in with the culture. Absolutely. Exactly what you said. And what our customer also told us is that uh, previously they would lose out on some customers because the start date would be so far out because they had to have the same start date. Mm -hmm. So they'd interview someone, but obviously these agents are, or prospects are interviewing with other companies. And then if they offer them a start date in three weeks and someone else offers them a start date tomorrow, they're going to join the other company. So they would actually lose out on candidates, which they, they no longer lose out on now. You can hire people according to your surges in demand and be a little bit more reactive to actual demand rather than having to predict demand, you know, a month or maybe even two months ahead of time to hire the people and train them. Now you just hire them and they're ramped up in, in just a few days. But another aspect of that surge in demand, which you also talked about is the fact that it just takes three days to train people on something new. You could train your agents on more different topics. So each agent, instead of just being like, I'm trained to do this, like billing, and I'm trained to do technical support or whatever mm -hmm. troubleshooting, you can train them to do multiple things. So if you have a surge in requests, like every support team does either seasonality or launch of a new product or something like that, you can reappoint agents to like cover that surge. So let's say you, your billing team is, doesn't have too much requests, but your technical support team has a lot of requests all of a sudden mm -hmm. because the product's being recalled or you're launching a new product or something, you can reallocate those agents to a different type. And so your surge is kind of more flat 
compared to your capacity. Yeah, it's an interesting use case. I've seen that where things are just going absolutely crazy in one department. So you bring in people from another just to help out temporarily. And it can be really hard for them to readjust to the types of queries that you get in your section. And I don't know about you, but I definitely think I learn by doing. Something will stick in my head if I can try it out for myself. Mm -hmm. So if someone can just get stuck in straight away and take those calls and hear from a customer, I think if people are similar to me, (laughs) that information would stick a lot easier. Yeah, totally agree with you. And so just another thing I wanted to share that, again, I found really interesting, I hope Mm -hmm you and the audience finds it interesting as well, is this ability to train people on multiple specialties. So it's something that I really cared about when, for my support team. Often people burn out from doing customer support and the burnout can come from a, a variety of different reasons. Like some is I don't feel qualified to do my job. Customers are yelling at me or I don't feel like I'm doing a good job helping them. I'm not enjoying my job. I'm out. Mm-hmm. Another one could be I'm actually doing a great job. I'm super good at solving billing problems but I'm just doing building problems all day, every day, and I'm bored of it and I want to do something different, right? Mm-hmm. So the ability to train them on many different things means that they, you give them more horizontal mobility within the support team and it improves retention. So it reduces attrition. So that's also something that I thought was, was really interesting and it's mm-hmm. exciting for me to hear as someone who's done customer support, not just in that call center, but throughout my career, I've done a few that were making their lives better, more fun, more interesting. We've spoken a bit about how being a customer support agent can be quite tough and it can be quite hard to retain customer support agents sometimes depending on how they're enjoying it. It's a hard job to be dealing with, especially if you're getting a lot of complaints, it's very taxing on you to have people calling through if they're shouting at you or if they're unhappy and you don't feel like you can do enough to help them. It can really, bring you down a little bit. How do you support happy agents and promote a really good, healthy culture? Great question. I think there's there's happiness in any job. There's many different facets. So I'm not going to do this question full justice, but I'll just share a few things that I care about. I think one of the most important things is as a support agent, you know, having come from there myself, sometimes companies make support agents feel like second-class citizens in the company. Like support's less important. It's just a cost center. How can we have less support agents, et cetera? And I, that's not the way I view it. And I make an effort to proactively share how important I think support agent is to celebrate them and to show the impact that they bring beyond just, yeah, I closed another ticket, but rather look how happy this customer is. Look at the positive word of mouth we're getting from these customers. Look at this NPS response where they talked about how great our support team is. Mm-hmm. Look, look at these referral customers that we're getting because they're so happy with our product and our team. They're referring other customers to us. So I think it's it's internally making them feel the importance that they actually have and, and the value that they bring to the company. And then beyond that, I think you know when, when we're hiring people for support roles or customer success roles, you're looking for people who genuinely care about other people and who genuinely like to help people solve their problems. So I think empowering them to actually solve people's problems and then making sure that they feel fulfilled in that and having that kind of camaraderie within the team that they feel like they're helping each other solve people's problems is something else that's important. I think on the topic of reducing the training time for customer support agents I think that can have a huge impact as well I don't know about you but if I was doing a long-winded training session I'd kind of feel like I wasn't quite part of the team yet I wasn't doing the same things they were doing or facing the same challenges but if you can get stuck in and you can learn how to do the job quickly and do it well then you're on the same level as the rest of your colleagues and you can develop that bond. That's a great point. And, and actually support agents like helping each other. Like I'd never worked in an organization that was large enough that we had a dedicated training team within the support team, right? Mm. So it was always, it always fell kind of on everybody in the team to kind of help out new agents. Like we had a formal onboarding that was actually a month long. So even longer than where, you know, they ramped up in terms of productivity. You know, at first they do zero tickets for the first couple of weeks and then they do X number a week and then they keep ramping. But the, the point is that some people who are stressed because we have a huge queue and a lot of customers that need our attention and they have to go help an agent, they're, they're like, oh, I need to be helping customers and I'm being distracted by this. 
So I think actually, as you said, re reducing the need for training and the need for other agents to support each other may actually help reduce the, that kind of frustration that, that they're being distracted by another agent rather than helping the customers. I think that it's a good thing to reduce the training time to promote the productivity, the capability and the confidence of the agent, but it's mm -hmm. not a case of just getting them in quickly and reducing cost and mm -hmm. shoving them in seats to get tickets out. I think it is a case of actually this is good for the agent as well. Yeah, it's good for the agent and for the customer. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast, David. It's been super interesting hearing your thoughts and especially with the huge varied background that you have. It sounds like you're doing some amazing things at Zingtree and I can't wait to hear more about what you're getting up to. Thanks. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. I, I really enjoyed this conversation and uh, looking forward to maybe having other conversations with you. Yes, looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Thanks.